Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here. Today I'm going to share with you a couple of interesting facts about how to use the SD card with the lovely YOLO box. <laughs> if you're not familiar, real quick, YOLO box is a live stream encoder and switcher, video monitor and audio source that you can use in order to go live and share your events, share your church services, funerals, weddings, whatever you'd like to share, you can share live on YouTube, Facebook, even Twitch and Twitter, things like that. It's really exciting. I want to go over a couple things first just to get you started and then move into some kind of advanced things that you might do with it, like how to create a really awesome intro video for your weddings or for whatever event you're having. If that kind of stuff is up your alley, stick around. We're getting ready to do it now. So I've got Yellowbox set up right now to have my computer as a source, the camera as a source, and an SD card video as a source. I'm actually switching to that SD card video right now to kind of give you an example of what it would look like. And I want to do something else. I want to switch over the audio so that you can kind of see what's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and click local video now, and you'll hear some audio pop in. Right here. Now you might think that we've only got three sources of video, live video, and one source of recorded video, pre-recorded video on the SD card. But we actually have another. We have a fourth source that you're seeing right now. And that is the fact that Yellowbox is actually recording while we're doing all this and it's recording in 1080p. What that means is that you can actually use Yellowbox to produce your entire live event with that screen record feature, and you can have one master file that you put together in something like Adobe Premiere or even your Windows Movie Maker later in order to stitch that together into one complete unit. When Yellowbox records, it gives you 10 minute chunks. So you will have some chunkification going on in your project, but it's really easy to put back together. So, how do you go about using your SD card? Most of the time, you're just going to plug your SD card in and it's going to work just fine. But for the best results, go ahead and format it first. We've got that plugged in, and over here in just a moment, we should see the SD card reader pop up. I'm just going to go ahead and click on my Start menu, and I'm going to type in Format. As I do, uh, Create Format Hard Disk Partitions pops up, and I look for the drive I just inserted. Since the computer said Hard Disk F was inserted, I'm going to look for Hard Disk F. So back over here to the computer, you can see that. There it is right there. I click on it. I then do a right click and I select format and then it'll be off and on your way. And it really is just that simple to format your SD card. There's something else that's really interesting about the SD card here and that is the use of the volume controls here on Yolobox in order to access whatever volume or video source you're using. Now currently as you can see that I actually have it set to HDMI 1. But you'll notice there's some mastering and monitoring mixing options that are right here. Just look, check it out. You'll see you've got HDMI 1, you can boost the volume, you can reduce the volume, HDMI 2, local video, that's your SD card. The SD card is over here in the side, as you can kind of see right there. And then finally, you'll have a live stream. In fact, you have all of this for all your video inputs. You even have a special one just line in right there that you can see when you want to put your audio directly in, say through something like a, a handy recorder, a field recorder, something like that. Works very well. Let me share with you a real quick pro tip. Don't mix around too much with the 10%, 15%, 20% or higher. You don't want it to go there. 10% is what would be considered the unity volume, the proper volume for coming in, or in this case, 100%. Anything over that, you're going to begin to over-modulate the signal and it's going to start to break up and clip. Now, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of room there, but it's very important in case you have a signal that's coming in that is extraordinarily soft. In most cases, you'll never use this, but if you do need to boost a really soft signal, it will introduce some noise, but at least you'll be able to hear it. There's a lot of headroom here for that, but you're also going to hear a lot of noise when you start using it. It's best to adjust your sources of audio either at the input source itself or on a mixer like using the line in. All right, let's go ahead and jump into one other thing, and let's talk about how you use this. There's lots of features. We're really just dealing with the SD card and what you can do with it. Obviously, you can record on the SD card and then pull that back up as a playback medium for your SD card source. But what about if you've got a birthday party and you want to live stream it for grandma, grandpa, and all your cousins and friends and family that are out of town? What might you do? Well, that's where we're going to take it back over here to the computer. So the first thing is you're going to want to create some kind of video. It's a video card source, SD card source. It requires video. So what might you do? And if you had some video, wouldn't you like some effects to go over top of it? And if you had some effects, wouldn't it be nice to have some sound, some music or something? Well, I'm going to share, you what it, share with you <laughs> where you can get all that stuff right now. First of all, Rocket Stock. I'm jumping over here to the computer for you. If you go to rocketstock.com, 
this is a place where I get a lot of my video effects. It's a, it's a really great place to do exactly that. You get these effects and then you can use them in your projects. But these are for Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects templates that you can use. Just come over here and click on freebies, find one, click on it, download it, and then it's yours to use. Now I've already done some downloading and I've got this so I'll bring that file up in just a moment. But let's address the second part. Where do we get our music? Well, come right over here. If you just search in YouTube, royalty-free YouTube music, it will actually pop up and it'll pop up in a creator studio. Now, you may need to have a creator account that might be helpful, but I'm sure that even if you don't have a creator account, you can access it straight through your YouTube studio. If you don't, it might ask you to create a YouTube studio account and you will need to be logged into your YouTube account. But here you go, at this point in time, we've got all kinds of music royalty free. This is gonna make it really easy to stream, right? Because the music's already been vetted on content creation and content ID networks so that it's good to go. And if you're streaming to YouTube, you won't have any problem streaming your content with this music to YouTube. So now that you've got that, what are you going to do? Let's take it over to the computer. So I'm over here in Premiere Pro. I'm just going to double click on my import dialog and I've already navigated to this spot earlier. Here is Robert Ham Photography. This is just a static image. Okay, now that I've got my photo, I want to create a timeline that will work with Yolo Box that I can create this video and make it as small of a file as I can possibly get it, but still have really nice quality. To do that, I'm going to go over into Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to right click I'm going to create new item and a new sequence. I'm in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select 30 frames a second. Now, once I've done that, it creates a timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag, click and drag my Robert Ham Photography logo straight onto the timeline. And there it is. You actually see the timeline. Now, it's nothing more than a photo right now that's four seconds long. So I'm going to drag it out to about a minute. I just did that by left click and drag. Now this is where some of the other interesting things come in. This is where we're going to use some of those downloads that we did previously. So if you downloaded something like some volumetric light leaks or some bokeh effects, you'll have it to use now. And let me show you how you get there. You come back to your import dialog, double click, and I'm going to import them. Okay, at this point in time, I've got all the assets I need to create this video. All of them were free, and they were easy to use, and they're going to be awesome for my intro. In this case, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab the light leaks and I'm going to put the light leaks on top of everything. I need to do one other thing over here. I need to go ahead and click on my effect, come over to effect controls. Notice I've clicked on that one right there and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the opacity blending mode to screen. Okay. And in that case, I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy. I'm going to select all of these by drag and click and dragging. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click paste attributes. And it's going to ask me what to paste. I'm going to paste opacity. Boom. Now they've all been adjusted. And what that's going to do is allow me to put this over top of Robert Ham Photography. If you notice, if I come over here to my screen mode and I change it back to normal, you can't see Robert Ham Photography. So we need to use that screen mode on all of them. And we can just as easily right click and ripple delete and it'll fill in everything just the way that we want it. Looks great. Okay, there are a couple other options that we can change, but without worrying with them, we're going to go ahead and add the music. So let's do that now. We come back over to our project. We find our music, which should be beneath the stars right here or beneath the moonlight. We left click and drag and hold it onto the timeline. At this point in time, we're also going to go ahead and shorten it just by click and drag. Okay, that's starting to look really good. This is going to be a great intro or outro for whatever it is that you're doing. The final thing that I would say is you would go ahead and add some finishing touches to this, maybe cross dissolves. You might even change how the effect looks. But there is one more really interesting thing that we can do right here. And that is to go ahead and just add one more effect over top of it to give it some character. So I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to grab an ambient dust overlay. And we're going to take this and we're going to put it on top. And we're just going to go ahead and kind of grab this one and put it up here too. And now we're also going to come over here. We're clicking on it. Make sure you got V selected. Click on it. Go to Effect Controls. Go down to 50 because this one's a 4K and we're on a 1080p screen. Now that we're at 50, we're also going to take our blend mode opacity, bring that back down to screen. And we're going to do one other thing. We're also going to take the opacity down a little bit. Let's take it down to about like 80 or something. 60. That's good. Whatever feels comfortable for you. At that point in time, we're going to right click once again, copy. We're going to left click 
on the other one, right click now, paste attributes, and it's going to ask, what do you paste? And we're just going to paste opacity. Actually, we're going to paste motion as well because that's what scaled it down. Okay, great. Now that we've got those two things done, what I'd like to do is actually move the new effect that we've added over top of the crossfades or where the other effects end. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to go ahead and select them by clicking and dragging. We're going to hold the Alt key. We're going to hold the left mouse button. We're just going to move them over. We're going to let go with the left mouse button. We're going to do that whole process again. Okay. The final thing that we're going to do here is we're going to hold the left mouse key, mouse button, and we're going to create a selection and drag all of these. Now that they're all dragged over, we're going to control D, which allows us to add the default transition. Now it may say insufficient media. Don't worry about that. It's just going to repeat the frames. It'll still look fine. Now that we've done that, all of these effects are going to fade in and out together so it'll look a lot nicer. You can also do that with your logo. And you can also add an exponential fade to the end of the sound for your music. We need that so that it doesn't just end abruptly. So click on your effects tab, just like this. Let me show you. So come on over here. Click on these little arrows. Go to your effects. You can also go to the effects control up here. Type in Expo. It's going to bring up exponential fade under audio transitions. Left click, hold and drag down to the music layer, your audio down here. So there you see, we have this whole file created. Guys, that's just one way we can use the SD card function on Yolobox to make some really great things. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Go ahead and give it a check out. Like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'm Rob, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.